All right, all the marbles. What? 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 Welcome back to Small Arms Firearms, and today we do the 2011 high-end pistol shootout review. Let's get to it. Wait, let's... Hello? Okay. I already know what's gonna happen here. So, no, you will not see a staccato in this video. It's, I already can hear and see the comments. Where's the staccato? Where's the XC? How come staccato isn't on the list? Uh, okay, so before I bought a 2011, before I really got into competitive shooting, I went and looked and rented staccatos and tried them out and I think they're nice pistols. I really do. I think they have a good quality pistol that shoots soft and it's fast and it's accurate and it's dependable. I think it checks all those boxes. I don't think it's better than a platypus. I've shot all of these. And for the price, I still think the platypus is a better bet than buying an XC because the XC does not fit any kind of need for me. I guess you could use a comp gun in like things like Steel Challenge and Open, but you're not going to see a Staccato. You're not going to see a Prodigy. This review is more on semi-custom to custom 2011s that you will never see in a gun store. Something that you can't just go and potentially rent. I can't go to the local ranges and rent a platypus. I can't rent a voodoo. I can't rent an atlas. They just don't have them. That's just not something you have the opportunity to do. So if you're curious about a staccato, you can always go and rent one at probably most of the indoor ranges around the country. Everyone seems to have them. They're mass produced 2011s, just like the Prodigy. They are a better quality than the Prodigy. I'm not comparing them at all to the Prodigy. But for the price and the fact that I shot them, and was not that impressed that I wanted to buy one is why you won't see one in this video. All right, we can continue now. So I decided I'm going to stop doing just like those initial impressions videos as much as I can and really give you an actual review on the pistols that we're shooting. So I came up with as much of a scoring system as I thought kind of makes sense to me when I'm either buying a pistol or I'm gonna use it for competition or anything, the, the items that I look at in a pistol. Um, it's a handgun and whatever this purpose is, these are the items that I feel like really determine if it's a good value and in what use case does it have. So those categories are the trigger, the ergonomics, the craftsmanship, like the fit and finish, the materials, the build quality, how it's built, um, the return to zero or the shootability. That's not a word, but we're gonna use it. Uh, and like your felt recoil features. Out of the box, do you get two mags? Do you get four mags? Do you get all the optic plates? Do you get extra grip, um, sizers, uh, back straps, whatever you want to call it? What do you get feature-wise when you purchase the firearm? And then price. If it is a decent quality pistol and the price is way too high compared to whatever else is on the market, it's going to score low. All of these scoring systems are on one out of ten. Now, the price one is is tough because you're going to see me review guns that are like 2011s that are custom built that are absolute Ferraris in that, in the firearms community or world. Um, but they're like a Ferrari. Do you really get that much more performance out of something like that versus slapping a compensator on an M&P 2.0? So these are the things we're going to go over and I'm not going to put the prices. It's all one through 10. So, it's not, hey, well, in the price category of 2011s, it's pretty decent, so we'll give it a six or a seven. No, it's out of all the handguns available. So that's how we're going to do the price. The, uh, the other objects or the other subjects are pretty easy to kind of score on those, one out of 10. And we're going to give you a total score, score out of 60, and we're going to do a running total throughout all the series of videos that I produce, and we'll keep a list at the end of each review video showing who's in the top 10. So first up on our list, we have the Oracle Arms 2311. In a previous video, I did go over this pistol. Um, it is the compact version. I wouldn't consider this a custom 2011 by any means. 
Uh, it is unique in the fact that it takes Sig B320 Max, but I finally got some more time with it. I was, we were having a little issues under rapid fire because it needs to be cleaned and it wasn't lubed as much. So the softer ammo that I load for competitive shooting was not feeding that great through it, but we made it through it. We were able to get some build drills and we were able to kind of just compare it to the other pistols as far as everything we wanted to. Uh, Oracle Arms 2311. This is the 2311 Compact. Uh, I know I've said in a previous video, like, I didn't really like the grip size as much because it feels like it's just really wide. And that's coming from a person that uses palm swells on like everything. It just feels a little wider than I would like for my hand. And as for conceal and carry, that might be a little difficult for somebody like me. But other than that, the ergonomics on this are fantastic. They're ambi controls. They even have a little mini gas pedal up here uh, that helps really get your thumb. Kind of just know where you need to go with it. Um, this is a fun one to shoot, so we're gonna do some build drill action here. Safety's really tactile, nice. In order to not make this video an hour long, I'm gonna try and go through this as fast as possible. I'm not gonna just send any fluffer, we're just gonna go through. Trigger, there's hardly any trigger movement with it. This thing is We're gonna shoot pretty, some steel. There's like just a really small pre-travel and you're at the wall and then it breaks and there's like really basically no movement with like this trigger. The break on the trigger was three pounds, seven ounces. It's very short trigger. There's literally n almost no pre-travel and post-travel. It's a crisp break and in my opinion, it is the perfect weight for a duty or a carry pistol at that three pounds, seven ounces. So right at three and a half pounds. Um, I gave it eight and a half points because it is still a single action 2011 trigger. It feels great. It works phenomenal for um, a carry gun. The ergonomics on it, they feel good. Uh, it's not the best 2011 ergonomics, uh, but they do get some points because they have that integrated small ledge thumb, their gas pedal built into both sides. It's an ambidextrous gun in every essence. The controls on both sides are ambi, and so they put an actual gas pedal on both sides. And so for you lefties out there, that you can never, ever, ever get a gas pedal for your strong hand, you actually get one on this out of the box. And that's great ergonomics. I still do feel like either the grip's too long or too wide. I'm not really sure, it just, I yeah, don't know if Dave it's a combination of, of that, being maybe uh, longer and wider. I don't know. It just feels yeah. a little yeah. Dave has awkwardly some, uh, large. That's my only complaint about this pistol. Other than that, it's not, uh, I really, really love it. Yet. It's awkward a little bit in the hands for that grip size. I think you can get used to it, shooting it a lot. But as for a carry gun, the ergonomics are still too big for me. I'm a skinny guy. It's not going to work. Um, it still gets 7.5 points out of 10 for ergonomics. The craftsmanship. Uh, it, it does have a very smooth fit and finish for a compact carry gun. I have to give it that. There's really no play, no wobble in the slide, and it, it just feels quality. You can tell they took their time building this. It's not your hand-built custom guns like you're going to get from Atlas, but you can definitely tell a difference between all the carry guns that I've ever shot, 365s and Glocks and Smith & Wesson, there's an exceedingly higher tier of craftsmanship involved in the 2311. With the issues with having to keep it lubed and cleaned, significantly more than a striker gun, significantly more, in order to have it reliably cycle at higher rates of fire. Um, we're gonna give it seven points on the craftsmanship just because of that. Shootability, uh, it shoots great uh, for the size. It doesn't have a compensator. It doesn't have any ports. Um, and it's lightweight. It's very lightweight, uh, for a 2011 for that kind of size of gun for its weight and not having any ports or comps, it shoots great out of the group of all the pistols we're shooting. They're full size, basically custom 2011s. It does have the most belt recoil. It does have the most muzzle rise, but it, that's to be expected with that kind of weight and that size of a pistol. Now it still does come back to zero very fast. 
If you were to shoot a P365X macro and then shoot this one, you're gonna be picking the 2311 just because of that full size grip and the fact that it does weigh more than that. I like what they're doing, I've said that before, but I can't see myself ever buying this for a carry gun. Just the reliability we had with rapid fire on it being dirty, compared to my P365 that has the Shalo Tech lower, the Parker Mountain Machine comp and barrel, mine shoots just as good, if not slightly better, and it was cheaper. And it's way more reliable. I've had well over thousands of rounds through it, and my cleaning is oiling the rails here and there. I, I'm, I'm still running this thing until it just stops. But the features that come from OA or Oracle Arms on the 2311, they do give you that integrated gas pedal. Um, it comes with three magazines, which is generally better than most everybody, but at the price point, I still wanna see five mags in there. I want to see five magazines. I just, want, I just want to see it. Four, give me four. Stop sending us two. Three is better, but let's get at least a four. Please. It does come with four optic plates, so no matter what optic you're running, you're gonna be set. You don't just pick one from the factory and that's it, and if you decide to change optics later, you're screwed. They come with four optic plates, has the tritium night sights, and it comes with a great range bag as well. So the features at Oracle Arms, they really did outdo themselves on making sure that you didn't just pay a higher price and got just a gun. They gave you what you need. Eight and a half points on uh, the features. The price. The model we shot was the 2311 Compact. It's $1,900, and that is the cheapest version of the 2311 you can get. Uh, I don't think this stands out as a must-have compact pistol. I do like... The price point for 2011 because it's under $2,000. But at that point, it's a hard pass for me considering what else is out there currently. I like the 320 mag idea and I like what they're doing and the features. But this is uh, going to get them two points on the price. In conclusion, there was 42 points out of 60. Uh, it's still a great pistol and it scores above average. So I think it's a great range toy and maybe a full size, but you wouldn't see me buying this for anything other than that. Our next pistol on the list is the Bull Armory SAS 2 Air. I love this gun. I've shot it so many times. Um, so you know how I feel about it. The trigger is amazing. It's one pound. 15 ounces. Um, the trigger has a little bit more side to side play, a little okay, bit of up and down, so it's about even whittling, down. not and much at some point we'll have to by any means. Uh, not, still fantastic trigger. Uh, still an amazing trigger. Not to move, but I think for what we're doing today, right on par, right, just as it is. similar to uh, the uh, Voodoo. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, I would say the Voodoo the just is a little shorter than the Bull. Yeah, the bowl just has a little bit more wobble to it and it's a little longer. It's still fantastic shooting pistol. Uh, it's a short take up on the trigger. The post travel is also short. It has a crisp, clean break. Um, there is a little bit of wobble in it compared to the other pistols on the list. Uh, it is still a production 2011. That side to side wobble on the trigger, you don't notice at all when you're firing, especially at speed. Um, but for a for factory production, style level gun the trigger is great it's getting eight and a half points uh the ergonomics on it are great the thumb ledge is great it just feels like a good solid performer the even though the grip so it's uh it's either aluminum i think it's an aluminum lower but the grip itself is a polymer and it offers great texture it, it really does it's great texture it's similar to something like how staccato does their texture and their polymer over the aluminum or steel and the bull shoots very 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 similar to the voodoo what i mean by that is the slide and the weight of the pistol make it feel like the cycle rate on these are slower and we're talking thousands of a second slower and, but you honestly i feel it when i shoot this it feels like it cycles sluggishly compared to all the other ones same like this not like i'm waiting for it to come back into battery it still runs faster than i can pull the trigger obviously when you're getting 16 uh, 0.16 uh, second splits on a build drill so they still run fast obviously the ergonomics on it it's beefy it's not like it's the grips too big it's just it's a hunk of steel is what it feels like fits great in the hands 
Uh, you feel attached to it. Even though it is a polymer grip, not a big fan of those as much, especially when I'm paying this kind of money, it works. Just like the Staccatos, having the aluminum or steel lowers, but with polymer grips, you still have a good firm grip on it. It doesn't feel like it's sliding out of your hands, so it still works really well. Uh, I hate grip safeties though. All that being said, the ergonomics are getting 8.5, 8 8.5 points out of 10. Craftsmanship. This feels like a custom gun. Not gonna lie, don't know how they do it. It's a production gun. There's a little bit of play in the slide and the trigger, but coming from any other normal world of pistols, it feels unbelievably smooth. The build craftsmanship on this is wild. There's a little bit of play in it, but compared to pretty much 95% of all the other firearms, handguns out there, this thing's wild. But these are like mass produced 2011s that feel okay, so good. Go it's not as smooth as the Haze, it's not as smooth as the Atlas, and one. it's not as smooth as the Voodoo when it comes to like that glass-like feel with the slide. If I tell you a slide rides on glass, this thing rolls on wheels then. It still feels fantastic. Um, shoots like butter too. Nine points out of 10 on the craftsmanship. Shootability, it still shoots like a dream. All of that heavy weight on this thing makes it shoot really soft to the point to where it feels slower in the dwell time. It's not really slower. If it is, it's hundreds of a second craziness that you're not gonna ever be able to actually shoot the gun faster, pull the trigger faster than the gun can cycle. With that weight, it shoots smooth. It comes right back to zero real quick. The shootability on this is a solid nine out of 10. Features on it. It comes with three mags, just like the 2311. It has a nice hard case with it, and it actually comes with two recoil springs as well, so you can adjust the springs on them, tailor them more towards your load. This is more of a competition pistol. We're getting into that realm now. It only comes with one optic plate fit for an RMR. I don't know if there's a bunch of other optic plates you can get for it. I'm assuming they make them, but when you get it from the factory, it's just one plate, and it's just the RMR. It doesn't come with the thumb rest, so we had to add that, or Steve had to add that on. Polymer grip is nice, but in this price range, it doesn't have a rail either, so you're missing some features. It's only gonna get seven out of 10 on the features. Price, you do get a lot for this 2011 across all the other categories of 2011, but we compare the price to all pistols available. And I think the performance is phenomenal for the price of a 2011. If I was pricing it on a scale of one to 10 for 2011 price, it would score way higher, but it's still a $2,700 pistol. So it gets three points out of 10. Conclusion, 44 and a half points out of 60 available. It's a competition gun and that's about it. There's no rail, there's no frills to it. Uh, it comes with some extra springs to tune to your load of choice. It's heavy and it's great to shoot. For a limited optics gun, this thing is awesome. That's about it. Our next gun on the list, Stealth Arms Platypus. Trigger, similar to the Bull Armory, honestly. It's a standard 2011 trigger, uh, it's very clean, and this was a two pound, 5.3 ounce break. So a little under two and a half pounds. Not a whole lot of play in it at all. Very similar to the Bull, and for this being at the price point that they are, it gets eight and a half points out of 10. The ergonomics make it feel like your grandpa's 1911. I swear, it feels amazing. Uh, it's nothing crazy. Um, the grip that on the grip on the one I'm using in this review has a lot to left to be desired for texture wise. Now, showing you a picture on the screen here, I went and designed my own platypus and they have new grip options, new textures. They have more like the chili grip and then they even have a step above that, which is extra texture, which they brought to SHOT Show this last year, and people told them it was too much texture. I wish I could have felt it, because I probably would have slapped some bitches in the face saying, no, more texture, more better. Nothing else fancy about it. There's no gas pedals. There's nothing else really for the ergonomics. It's a 1911, 2011. It loses a point because it has the grip safety. With all the customization that Stealth Arms allows you for this, son of a bitch, give me the option to pin the grip safety. Please? If you did, I'd probably own one now. So it gets eight points out of 10. Craftsmanship build quality. It's not the same as the others on this list. It's better than basically any 
off the shelf pistol you can buy. It's still smooth. There's virtually no play in the slide and the trigger. There's a little bit compared to the actual custom 2011s, but it shoots reliably. Uh, the coatings seem to be great. It's put together phenomenally. I have not seen any reliability issues across the two different platypuses I've shot and off the multiple times I've shot Steve's. These things are a workhorse. I think they are fantastic for a com competition limited optics gun and potentially even a duty. And like I said at the beginning of this video, you wouldn't catch me buying a Staccato P over a platypus ever, ever. Now, you can go into most big box gun stores and find a Staccato P on the counter. You can buy it and walk away with it that day, depending on the state you live in. Platypus now is up to a 10 to 11 month wait time on any of the custom guns you make. Still worth it over the Staccato. Go ahead, yell at me, scream at me. I'm right here. Uh, I will still give it eight and a half points out of 10 on the craftsmanship and build quality for the uh, Stealth Arms Platypus. Shootability. It's lighter than the Bull Armory. It still shoots great. It does have more muzzle rise and a little bit more recoil than some of the other ones because it is lighter and it's not comp reported, but it's still a 2011 and it shoots really smooth. It's everything you would expect out of a standard 2011 package eight and a half points out of 10 features. Now this is where it kind of gets wild because you can custom color everything on this. Uh, the grips, the slides have different cuts. The triggers have different shoes. The triggers have different weights and everything is customizable on this. I swear to you, it's so much fun doing it. Even if you don't plan on buying one, go check their website out. It is so much fun designing pistols in their just po web portal of insane infinite amounts that you can do for a 2011. And it takes Glock 17 mags. This thing gets a solid 10 out of 10 on the features you can get from Stealth Arms. Now the price, base models start just under 1500 bucks and they can go up to 2400 pretty quick depending on how many features you're adding into that and different options, threaded barrels, different slide cuts, different grip lowers. So the price can go up, it's like a thousand dollar range. So that could be pretty drastic value depending on what you pick. But at this price and it's a 2011 and how well it shoots and all the features you get compared to all the other pistols in the world, it gets four and a half points out of 10, even at that super high price range. That's how much I love this pistol. In conclusion, the total is 48 out of 60 points with all the customization and the performance and it takes Glock mags. This is one of the better 2011s and if you are looking to get into 2011s and your budget is limited, this is the way to go, especially considering it's Glock 17 mags. And I need to reiterate that because if you plan on buying five, six, seven mags to go do range days, I have to buy 2011 mags at Virgin. You can get Prodigy mags for pretty cheap, but for competition, I'm spending $115, $130 per magazine. How much does a Glock 17 mag cost? Yeah, these things are great. This pro these platypuses are amazing. Next pistol on the list, we have the Voodoo Priest. I had heard about these, didn't really research them a whole lot. Um, had heard some good things. Let's dive in. The new ones we got here, Steve ordered the Voodoo. This thing just looks awesome. Uh, this is the Voodoo Priest. He had this custom ordered, he designed it. I really like the maroon color. I don't ever really see that and it just works really well um, with the, like the silver. This gun just feels smooth. And it's the heaviest one out of all of them, hands down. It's heavier than the Bull Armory. It's heavier than the Erebus um, by a decent amount. I don't have a scale here to really give you the weight, but this thing is just heavy. And there is no play on the slide. There is no wiggle, no wobble, nothing. Nice bull barrel on it. It's smooth, just like the Atlas. A little bit of a, more of a hang up in the back. I don't know what that is. The Voodoo, because of its weight, when we were shooting it, and we'll, you saw on the high-speed footage, or I show on the high-speed footage now, um, it doesn't really move. It's just, it's so beefy that when it, it, it reciprocates, the muzzle just doesn't really move at all. Um, the trigger on it, there's no real side-to-side -side play. Quality of the trigger is great. It is a little heavier 
than the Atlas and the Haze, uh, but not by much. It's definitely a, a much, I, I didn't realize there would be a tier between like Platypus Bull Armory, then you have Atlas, and then there's like an, a definitive middle ground between those, and that's this Voodoo Priest. Uh, and for the price of these, they're phenomenal. Uh, I, I love it. So the trigger on this, the trigger has such a small throw, it's wild. I, I, the way that they have this adjusted from the factory, virtually no pre-travel, you're already at the wall, and the post-travel is crazy, and it resets crisp, and it's, uh, it's uh, it blows your mind how good the trigger is on something in this price point for a custom 2011. Uh, it was a two pound, 10.4 ounce trigger. So a little heavier than some of our super high-end ones, Still a great trigger and definitely doable for competition. It gets 8.5 points out of 10. So this is another standard 2011 frame. The ergonomics on it feel great. The Chili grip, it, I really do like these. Great texture. Uh, the weight of this thing is mind blowing. It's definitely a solid steel lower and upper and everything. And it even weighs more than the Bull Armory. We didn't have a thumb throttle on this one or a gas pedal on this one, but you can add one. Uh, ergonomics are great. It's going to get nine points out of 10. The only part of it that I didn't like as much was the slide cuts, um, the front slide cuts, the serrations right here. I'm guessing it was more of a cosmetic kind of style because it's the, like, looks like an original 1911 slide cut, the very thin serrations. Um, the haze, I'm able to just kind of barely grab on and rack it. The, um, voodoo, it didn't create much friction. So maybe Voodoo can improve on that in the future. Can't imagine that would add a ton to the price. A little bit deeper slide cuts maybe on the serrations. This is very nitpicky, but when we're in this price range, I get to nitpick, so f you. Build quality craftsmanship. This is where we really do hit that high tier custom. Somebody built this by hand, it feels like. The slide is on glass. It feels just like anything Atlas produces when it comes to just the movement and the cycling of the pistol. It's so damn heavy. It is like a brick and it doesn't move. You can customize this from them. You can contact them and get different colors. It's a lot of fun also customizing these and looking at them. This is a pistol that's on my radar now a lot because of the quality you get out of it, the craftsmanship, the finish on it, 10 points out of 10. It's perfect. Shootability. This thing is so heavy and it's a 2011 and the grip's amazing and the trigger's great. When you shoot this, you basically don't feel much recoil at all. It's so soft. Uh, the muzzle rise is virtually non-existent, just like the Bull Armory, but it's even better. So this gets nine points out of 10 on the shootability. Feature-wise, so there's a lot available on the website. Uh, you can do customization on the frame, the slide, the triggers, the safeties, the grip, magwell the colors and it keeps going on uh, but they lost me on you get two mags you only get two mags with it shame on you voodoo it's just two mags it's not cool they get nine out of ten points on the features price thirty five hundred dollars and for that price it's almost half as much as an athena that's a steal in the world of custom built 2011. It can run fast it's an amazing built machine and it's still $3,500 and it only comes with one optic mount, two magazines, it comes with a gun case, it's fairly nice, but it's only two mags. You can customize it quite a bit from the factory, uh, but that two mags and everything, and for that price of $3,500, it's getting three points on the price. Conclusion, we got a 48 and a half out of 60. I love this pistol. It shoots great, it looks great. Great. The weight feels amazing. The grip's awesome. This is a competition pistol through and through. I would love to run it in a competition. I would love to have this thing in a match. It, it's a great pistol. And at $3,500 being basically half the price of an Athena, it's a, it, I, in my opinion, it's a no-brainer. You get this instead of an Athena. Next one on our list. It's the only one I have here currently on the table, uh, the Atlas Athena. Now, we know that this triggers nuts. It is a one pound, 11 ounce, one pound, 10 ounce trigger. 
That's the take up. That's the brake. That's the reset. Just a little bit of reset. It is a little more reset than the haze. It's still not much, but it is the Athena and the Erebus have the lightest triggers I have ever put on a trigger gauge. Flat out the lightest triggers. That's it. It's insane. Um, there's no wobble in the trigger, very slight pre-travel, very little to nothing post-travel. Reset is fantastic. It's crisp, it's clean, it's fast. It gets nine and a half points out of 10. Ergonomics, the custom grip panels that you can get from Atlas to where you can have palm swells and then you can have steps on the offhand side so you can get a better grip on it. The grip texture on this is really grippy. It will put diamonds in your hand when you squeeze it because it is designed to do that. It's for competition pistols. I just put that on my hand for a split second. You saw me do that. The thumb or the gas pedal on this, the safeties, everything on the ergonomics on this is literally the perfect handgun. It feels amazing. 10 out of 10 points. Craftsmanship and build quality. I, I don't know anyone that does it better. What they've put together and how this thing feels and how when you are just moving that slide. It's perfection. 10 out of 10 points. I don't think anyone beats them, probably infinity, but these things, they're the best. Shootability, it's not a comp, it's not ported. It really does have a perfect zero system with all that being said. It's fast, it comes back to zero, the dot never leaves your window, it's fun to shoot, and you can do it all day long because of how easy it is to shoot. Nine points out of 10 on the shootability felt recoil. Features. You still do get to customize quite a bit from the factory on Atlas. Uh, your mag wells, your grip panels, what optic plate you want. Um, generally, you get a choice of two colors, depending if they have that available at the moment. They do have a new hard chrome version out now. Um, you get three mags, but only two of them are the 140 millimeter competition mags. The other one's the short mag. So for me, that that's useless so it's like two mags to me and these guns are meant to be competition pretty much only with that being said you get custom length triggers custom weight on your trigger pull i'm gonna give it nine out of ten points on the features just because what you can do on their website is you have the ability to customize it to what you need and those are the features i want it does come with a nice soft range bag you have to pay extra to get the hard one i didn't need that um, so features, it still gets nine out of 10 price. Wow. This is $5,800 right now as, as we're filming this video, uh, the prices have gone up and up and up on these. It is perfection in a limited optics pistol. I swear to you it is, but for that price, you can spend half as much and you're going to do just as good. It's this gets two out of 10 points in price. I'm just going to be real with you. There's no reason to spend that much money if you're solely using it for competition. This is an heirloom pistol for me. I love it. It's never going anywhere, and I don't regret the purchase at all. But let's be real here. That's a stupid price. Conclusion on the Athena. It gets 49 out of 60 points. It's pretty much the favorite gun that I own. I, I, out of all my guns, this is my favorite. Um, it's everything I want in a pistol. The price is kind of scary, but I still don't regret it. You can't go wrong with the build quality that Atlas does, no matter what version of the pistols you're buying. You will love them. And onto the Erebus. This thing is just a workhorse. We had, I think about six people shoot it today, and all of those individuals had shot uh, my Athena, they had shot Steve's Bull Armory, the Hayes, Alien. These are all people that have shot in some of my videos previously. This thing's a joke. I don't know how else to say it. I still run the trigger on the haze faster. Don't know why, it could just be the way that's designed. 
The Atlas does have a little bit more uh, pre-travel. I, I, I can't imagine that would be why I run it faster, but I just do. And I'm gonna post all the trigger pound weightage in the description of the video so you can see it all there and see who had the best trigger weights. Um, this thing, when you shoot it, it feels like nothing's coming back at you. Basically, it's almost like shooting a rimfire. It's almost like shooting a rimfire, no joke. It has a little bit more rise than a uh, rimfire, but not yep. much. That compensator just works magic on this thing. We did have uh, some issues with it. Um, so, failure to eject. What did I do with the Failure wrenches? to load the next round when we were using my 115 grain hand-loaded competition ammo. I just think the power factor is a little too low for it to run in this. And even on the website, Atlas recommends, I think, a 124, almost factory loads. So we got some of his 120, Steve's 124s that he hand loads, loads them a little closer to factory, and it ran lawless with those. It's just chewed them all up, spit them out. It's the perfect camp gun. So this one's gonna be pretty quick. The Atlas Erebus uh, trigger. It's the exact same, basically. Nine and a half points. Ergonomics, exact same as the Athena. 10 points. Craftsmanship, build quality, exact same as the Athena. 10 points. The shootability. This thing's stupid. All the marbles. What? 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 No. No. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Especially after shooting the voodoo and switching to that. Yeah. <laughs> One sixty six. Oh my God. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that's like shooting nothing. Is that the Aramis? That's yeah. the comp. That, that's like shooting a... It's, like insane. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. It's insane. It makes shooting 9mm center fire cartridges feel like rim fire, and that is not a lie. You're seeing high speed footage of it. You're seeing first reactions that we've had from the range. I could not believe the compensator does so much. I have a compensator on my MNP 2.0, and I've shot it on high speed with and without it. Yeah, I can tell a little bit of a difference. Um, I can tell a huge difference between the Athena and the Erebus on how stationary that dot is and how it barely moves when I'm shooting an A-zone target at seven yards. It's ridiculous. Granted, I only had a hundred or so, a couple hundred rounds through it at the range. Still feels the exact same as the Athena as far as ergonomics, trigger and everything, so I'm really used to it. But that felt recoil was insane. I, unbelievably, you can't, I can't describe it as far as just the saying it's like a little step up from a rim fire. I can't imagine running this at a match how fast I could go, except for the fact that it would put me in open class and it's a minor power factor pistol. It gets 10 out of 10 points for shootability. Features, exact same as the Athena, same customizing options. They do have the new, they're not calling it hard chrome, but it is a, a silver version. It gets nine points out of 10. Price, this starts at $7,400. Yeah, it's an investment. Uh, I'm not too familiar with all the other competition leagues out there. I know Steel Challenge, I just did it and it would be a great pistol for steel challenge in the open division because you don't do power factors in that. You just, that's it. It's whatever the gun will run and as long as it'll chuck a piece of lead at a, at a steel plate, that's good. They don't check power factor in steel challenge. For the competition I generally do, it doesn't make sense to own it for that price. It is a collector's item. It's an heirloom pistol. It's a steel challenge pistol. Whatever, the, you, if those fit into your world, great because it is absolutely mind blowing how good that damn gun is. Because of that, it gets one point out of 10 on the price category. In conclusion, it got 49 out of 60 total points. Sticker shock on that thing makes it pretty much unobtainable for almost all of us 
on this planet to ever own an Erebus, or it doesn't make sense. Cars sometimes cost as much of it. it it's hard to swallow that price tag, but you get what you pay for, kind of, and it's a lot of fun to shoot, and it's so flat that I, it's just unbelievable. Our champion of the 2011 pistol shootout goes to Hayes Custom, which is kind of wild because after handling it a few times now at this point and shooting it a ton, it feels just like an Atlas Athena. It feels like Ben Hayes, I don't know the ins and outs of how he does his custom guns, but they use a lot of Atlas parts on it. And it they just use the V1 grip on it, but whatever he's doing takes it up just a step higher than what Atlas does. The trigger on this breaks at one pound, 15.5 ounces. So just a small hair under two pounds. It has, Virtually no reset. I don't know what they did to this trigger. It's slightly heavier than the Atlas trigger stock, but with that reset and the pre and post travel setup, I shoot that gun faster than anything I've ever shot. It is the best trigger on a handgun I've ever felt. I shoot splits so quick that this pistol is nuts. It gets a solid 10 out of 10. This is, like I said, the best trigger I've ever felt on a handgun. Hayes Custom 2011 knocked it out of the park. 10 out of 10, perfect score. You can't beat this. Bring it. Someone bring a trigger better. I would love to feel it. The trigger is way better on that one. I swear it's better than the Atlas triggers. Yeah, 165. And that was with a 76 first shot. Yeah, my splits are probably what the difference is. 22, 21, 15, second, a 15, a 16, a 15, and a 15. Yeah. So after I got those first two shots up and figured my cadence with that trigger, it's just wah. Yeah. You got to do one more now that you, you got the feel for the trigger. I didn't get the cadence as well. Yeah. 169. Yeah. Still Whatever. very nice. Yeah. And 7.9 on the first one. We should have recorded that one. <laughs> It was a little more than six shots. Yeah, it was very fast though. Well, it picked up the splits. 14. 14, yeah. <laughs> that gun wants to run fast. It does. It wants to run fast. Ergonomics, I mean, it's the same as the uh, Atlas, Athena, and the Erebus, but it does lose a half a point because the it doesn't have the V2 grips on it to where you can up your upgrade or change to a palm swell or to a step. So it does lose a half a point in ergonomics and it's gonna get nine and a half points out of 10. The craftsmanship and the build quality, exact same as the Athena uh, or the anything Atlas makes. It slides on glass, the tolerances are so tight, it's insane. It's a competition handcrafted gun that you won't find anywhere else other than Atlas and Infinity and maybe Alchemy, I don't know. but or Nighthawk, and it, they all make phenomenal crafted guns. And again, 10 out of 10, it, they, it, Ben knocks it out of the park on this one. Shootability, as far as felt recoil and return to zero, it feels the exact same as my Athena. Nine points out of 10. Features wise, you can do a lot of customization on a Hayes order. So you might have to contact them though to do it. They have the Cobra series is what we shot, but they even have island barrel sight tracker versions that can be Damascus slides and different finishes and colors. Um, you're gonna jack your price up to a whole different world when you start doing that though. It uses the Nighthawk, the iOS, or I don't know how they, iOS or however they, Nighthawk's optic plate system, basically. That's a great optic plate system that Nighthawk has used. So you can, you know you're gonna be able to get a ton of plates for it if you want, you get to pick one from the factory. It also comes with that nice custom hard case that Atlas offers, but you have to pay $200 extra if you get it from Atlas. The haze comes with it. Huge plus in my opinion. It, I, I feel like manufacturers or custom shops should be doing that. Even if they charge me an extra $100 what it costs them to get the case, 
don't tell me about it. Just say it comes with it because it just makes you feel like you're getting more for your money even though that doesn't make sense. I just prefer it that way. I couldn't find anywhere on their site how many mags come with it, so I don't know. It does ask you how many additional mags you want, which are normal standard prices, but it never said on the site how many they come with. So if you know how many they come with, please comment down so somebody else can know. Nine out of 10 points for features. Price, $5,000 is what they start at. Yeah, that's a crazy high price again, but it's still $800 cheaper than the Athena. It has a better trigger than the Athena. It comes with a better case than the Athena. I don't know how many mags it comes with though. And it comes with the iOS optic plate system from Nighthawk, which is a great optic system. When I got my Athena, I paid right at about that same price, brand new. So I don't have as any kind of remorse or regret having the Athena instead of the Haze. But now, if you're gonna tell me that I'm gonna have to spend six grand to get an Athena when a Haze starts at five, yeah, it's, it's a no brainer. I, you should go with the Haze. The trigger's just better and the fit and the finish, the quality, the ergonomics on it are basically identical. Haze blew me away with what they built, but it's still $5,000. Let's get real here. Three points out of 10. Conclusion, the winner got 50.5 points out of 60. I'm a little harsh on my scoring. Like it has to be perfect. So like 10 out of 10 is perfect. If you get a five out of 10, that's average. You're average, that's decent. So this got 50.5 out of 60. Great score. It does everything that the Athena can do and some things it does better than the Athena. The ergos are still so good that you don't need the palm swell on the step panel, but it can only elevate the quality of the pistol higher if they would just put that in. And it's cheaper than an Atlas Athena, and it does just as good, and I run it faster. I have to fight and fight and shoot drill after drill after drill to just bring that Athena time down to what I can get off the haze from a cold start. So that was a lot of information. That was a long range day. It was a lot of shooting, a lot of ammo, uh, a lot of testing and I hope you guys liked it. I know I'm still going to get a ton of hate for not having staccatos in here. Too bad. Like I'm just, I'm not on that bandwagon of production guns. I've told everyone before, they make a great quality pistol. The XC is fun to shoot. It's soft as hell to shoot, but it's also $4,300 with the polymer grip and it's not the same build quality even close to it and cut the price in half and I can do exactly what it does almost with the platypus. Cue the hate. Thanks for stopping by everybody. I love you all and bye. Go for it.